put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Sniper Elite V2 Video Game Review you are Carl Fairburn, an OSS agent sent to the ruins of Berlin during the closing days of World War II, during the months of April and May 1945. You are there to prevent the V-2 rocket program from falling into the hands of the Soviets, and that is the plot of the first one. Why am I... That is also the plot of this one. Um, actually, yeah, this is basically a remake of the first one, and it's not so surprising, really, because they didn't really give themselves a lot of leeway with the plot of the first one. You see, a series like Commandos, they're, they place themselves at different po points in... World War II, and it's not such a restrictive plot as, you know, take out the V-2 rockets. It's just, you know, deal with this or that really important target at some point during World War II. That's why that game didn't have to actually, that series did not have to reboot itself except for, you know, Strike Team, which I'm not sure is... No, no, that, that never happened. So anyway, yes, this is basically a remake, and frankly, a lot of the changes are aesthetic. There are... There are bigger changes, certainly, but they are very mixed. There are aspects of this that are better than the first one. There are aspects that are, frankly, worse. To... Let's start with the, the core concept of the game. It's basically a third-person shooter set in World War II with sniping as its main focus. And I do say it's a third-person shooter with sniping as its main focus rather than it's a stealth game or it's a sniping game because that really would not be accurate. It, too often forces you out of sniping, and it's not really that impressive when it comes to just the short-range fighting. It's clearly focused on the sniping. And as far as stealth goes, there are portions of this, there are levels in the campaign where you literally just... It's, it's a pop-up shooting gallery. You're just waiting, you know, for the next enemy to appear so you can take them out in just a wave of enemies. You may not even have to, you know, secure your own position particularly, you know. There may, they may only show up from the, the one direction, you know, or, or rather they may all just require sniping. It's not always that you actually have to, you know, take care of anyone who are sneaking into your position. Now, this has a handful of levels that are actually based on real-life locations, and it is a... it does take some interesting elements from just, you know, real-life history. <laughs> what with the, you know, rather, in spite of the very imaginative plot, you, you, you know, you're basically, your your character Carl Fairburn calls himself the first soldier of the Cold War, and yeah, it's 
it's an interesting scenario and it is of course also a scenario that best case scenario is that excuse me you postpone excuse me postpone the cold war by a little bit is yeah not not a goal that you would necessarily yeah it, you know you're not even sort of decisive in you're not even decisive in ending World War Two. Now you are mostly in just the the ruins of Berlin, excuse me, <clears throat> and the and ruins of cities around Berlin, where you know you're going through streets. There there's a lot of debris. Some some nice details that I noticed was that. A building might literally just still be falling apart. So you can see bricks that are loose may even be falling down. The you know there's there's smoke, there's fire, there's there's one multiplayer level. It's called Inferno and it lives up to that name. Literally every single building in it is on fire. There is there is fire all around you. It's a really cool fairly unique visual. Now, the... the, the campaign is fairly short. The, it, it took me six and a half hours to get through, whereas the first one was nearly 14 hours. And it is, again, like, like I've already mentioned, there are some there's some aspects of it that are underwhelming. Too often, you're not really sneaking at all. Like, there are parts where, I'm, there, there are barely any parts where you have to sneak. You know, if, if you sneak, you, you know, you'll have less, you, you can postpone when they discover you, but, that's, you know, and thus maybe limit how many you have to fight, you know, once they actually know you're there. And there are some very good, you know, mechanics to the, the, the stealth aspect. You can throw rocks to create a small noise distraction. You... If if you mask the sound of your of your shots with you know noises that are just naturally occurring, that will you know that'll prevent them discovering you. And you you could mask gunfire. And I'm I'm not gonna devote too much time of this to compare you know to to mention what is in the first. Almost everything that's in this was also in the first. But yeah, you can mask gunfire with these these noises, and now the noises actually get a visual indication. There's like a, an icon on the hood, which will literally blink for the little bit that you're, you know, that, that you could fire the shot. So you you know, ideally, you've got the shot lined up and you're just waiting for that noise that you can mask with. The icon comes on and you pull the trigger. Where in the first, no visual indicator and yeah. So, so that really does help a lot. And you do also, there, there is a pistol which has a silencer. So that also helps. Now, the actually I should mention other an, another thing in the as far as the atmosphere goes is that there are these you know papers that are flying in the wind and that along with the, the, the loose bricks give it a little bit more of a dynamic and organic feel. But we do still have these big blocks where it's basically just the one texture over it. You don't always notice, but it's 
it's very obvious and yeah it's I don't, I don't really know why they use that shortcut it it's it's very distracting and very obvious now I should mention some of the noises that you can use to mask your your fighter is artillery you know artillery strikes the, the you know the the noise of a machine running things like that the game is very linear especially the, the campaign you pretty much just have to go the the intended route now there are times where you can go around you know flank and choose the you know by yourself choose a vantage point but a lot of the way it is very linear and the actually the the multiplayer is much more open which is it's pretty common to these that the the multiplayer will be more open the the levels allow for flanking mixing up which route you take and yeah that's that's quite nice and done now a a problem that remains is that searching bodies and swapping you know your gun for their almost empty gun is still on the same key and it's not even like hold down the the key for one and you know press it for the other function it literally just yeah you'll often accidentally do you know you'll try to do one and accidentally do the other you do this this does have you less you know getting stuck in debris and the like and the controls are fairly smooth there is not a lot of storytelling but the cutscenes aren't too bad and there's narration before each mission there are collectibles and achievements which increase replay value along with you know trying to do better in a level now the the plot is quite thin and very bland you yeah you you really aren't kind of remember it much past completing the game now it does have you the the objectives can be fairly nicely varied although you may not be able to tell you know two levels apart and this is more due to objective you know yeah the objectives than the actual levels this one is not really monotone and you know repetitive in the overall levels but yes you you know you may be sent in to either kill or escort a guy you know sabotage something you know maybe retrieve or steal some yeah some some important object things like that and something that this does that the first did not is this one is actually focused on the plot in the first one there were entire levels where you couldn't really tell what what does this have to do with the plot and you know does it even have anything to do with the plot and in this is it it is much more focused and they do actually you know this one ends in a different way than the first one did so that's something at least now you as far as plot goes I suppose I should also mention there's this DLC level where you assassinate the Fuhrer it's very forgettable I wouldn't personally get it it's I mean there's some some fun to be had killing Hitler you know barring the interruption by a young monster Burns but it's yeah there, there's nothing particularly special about it it's just another level where you know you 
you maybe sneak a bit, you bend people down, yeah. Now this one does have a sort of tutorial prologue level, but it does, you know, you still don't really get a proper training ground where you can experiment with the different weapons to really learn, especially the, the ballistics of sniping. I'll get more into that. You know, so it's especially important because the sniper rifles have different kind of, you know, different stats, which is to be expected. And, yeah, in something like this, you really want to fully, you know, experiment in, if, in different situations. And it is very much just, yeah. Now, the... I suppose that, yes, that brings me nicely into the ballistics. Basically, you, you have to account for things like wind strength, the, you know, bullet drop, various things like that. And in, you know, you, you get a, an indicator when you're, when you engage the scope. And this actually updates, you know, based on what you're aiming at. So that's nice. With, you know, it, it yeah, it, it gives you an idea of how you correct for, I believe it's wind strength. Now, you again fight tanks. In this one, I don't think you can really sneak past any of them. And, you the the you know something that's pretty cool is they tend to know you're there you know so you know or at least it maybe goes into that both you know when whenever you're seen by one enemy you're seen by all of them and yeah that might actually be it for the, the tanks as well but yeah, there, and there's one level where you actually have to fight four of them. Thankfully, it's one at a time, but yeah. And rather than ever giving you a Panzerfaust, you always have to shoot their, their fuel thingy. Yeah, there's, there's fuel cap where, yeah, it's a very, it needs a very accurate sniper shot, and that will instantly take out the tank. And thus, yeah, you know, rather than Panzerfaust, you're still sniping. Now, the there is a nice vision indicator where if you know if an enemy is seeing you or has seen you, you will get this you know arrow which is white if they're you know starting to spot you, yellow if they're becoming suspicious and red once they're, you know, actually, you know, attacking you. And this is quite useful. It's a lot like the vision indicator you have in the, in, in Hitman Absolution. And it does indeed allow, you know, when, when you are sniping and everyone knows you're there, if an enemy spots you from well, yeah, anytime an enemy spots you, it will give that vision indicator. So if someone is at your left or your right, yeah, the vision indicator will let you know. And I suppose that's a good, this is a good time to get into. This is, in some respects, easier than the first. You no longer have limited saves. You, there is not really a worry about healing, you, you know, your health regenerates. And this does, of course, mean that you have to get out of the dangerous situation before you heal. But the first one actually had limited healing items, which, yeah, made it much more difficult. Or rather, I shouldn't say limited saves, actually. More accurately is that you are encouraged to not save too much. The more you, if, if you save beyond a certain amount, then you won't get, like, I think it's a certain score, you know, 
yeah, it's there. There's a certain point deduction related to not, you know, to to saving more than the encouraged amount. Now, you no longer have a watch, which also eliminates the timed explosives. I think this is just criminal. I thought that was one of the most enjoyable parts of the first and more unique parts. Where to, to briefly indicate what it is you're missing out on in this one is that you actually used to be able to set timed explosives to, you know, pretty much, I think it was any minute amount up to like half an hour and then you could follow it on your watch. So if you want it to be gone by the time, you know, you could set it to five minutes, ten minutes, and you could see on the watch how, how much more time you had. Now, this, you, you again have a submachine gun, a pistol, and some, some items in addition to your sniper rifle. You, you can't carry a another like rifle or the like. You only have those three guns. And there are a couple of different pistols and submachine guns. And the snipers, there's like half a dozen of those or something. And the among the items is a, a you know tripwire explosives, landmines, and dynamite. And dynamite can be shot to explode. And the other two kind of explain themselves. The tripwire you can actually pull from one place to another, so properly set up the tripwire. So that's quite nice. And you again have a really good throwing system. You know, he's he's got a bit of an arm on him, although it does remain realistic. And you yeah, you get a prediction of where the, you know, where it'll go, and you can, you know, you can move around as you, you know, determine exactly where it'll go, and you can actually, you know, throw it through like a, a broken window, you know, throw it into some ruins if, yeah, it's they're they're very effective, and any time you can. You know, you you can put it back away, so that's quite nice. One of the more unique aspects of this is, of course, the kill cam, which has now got an X-ray option. And before, a lot of people say that it's too frequent. You can actually adjust how common it is. And the x-ray is not every time. So basically, it'll, you know, it'll follow the bullet, may turn around it in 360 degrees, depending on how far away it is and such, and show you exactly where the bullet enters and where it exits. And this is especially impressive when, you know, when you shoot more than one person. You can... I think you can shoot up to four people with the same bullet, provided they're all in line, which is, you know, that's obviously an area where the stealth gets really interesting. It's a, it's a good reward for that. Now, the... Yes, the, the kill cam, when it gets into x-ray, you literally do see, you know, bones shattering and internal organs punctured with just, yeah, by, by the bullet, and it looks really brutal and horrifying. And the, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's something you remember, and it's, again, it's something that's really only in these games, that, you know, as, as far as I know. Now, this has leaderboards for, you know, yeah, a, a lot of the different 
and things so you can yeah com compare to other players online the you you do have a fairly decent cover system you you can basically cover you you can't cover behind everything that looks like you could maybe cover behind it and you can you know in order to the the only way you can really look out from cover is if it's not too tall and like there there are times when it looks like it isn't too tall for you to go up over but it still won't let you although it will always tell you there's you know an indicator on the hood for when you can you know stick your head out and and shoot and you you do also stick your entire body up maybe especially when you go you know to the side so you make yourself an extremely easy target when you do this and this also goes for if you're from cover trying to use the binoculars or throw a grenade now the, the binoculars are indeed really good for recon and you can use them to tag enemies and once you've tagged an enemy you know basically it the, the tag will remain on him and you can follow him if you know if he's running around between different positions you know there will remain that tag which you can see through walls and such and when you're yes if, if you once you aim at him, you have the empty lung ability. Anytime you engage the scope, you have the empty lung ability unless you're out of breath from sprinting or yeah. So again, that's a you know, that that puts some pressure on you that moves towards stealth. At least, you know, there's a focus on the sniping, definitely. So basically whenever you empty lung it's kind of this matrix effect of slowing down time and when you've tagged an enemy you may also get this small red box that kind of guides you towards the ideal place to shoot and this is especially useful for something like the the tanks where yes you can indeed tag them and it will show you where to shoot that the and wh where the the sniping will still be you know, yeah, it'll correct for, for wind strength and the like. And it it is a bit awkward because it's not so much that it's closing in on the, you know, the crosshairs themselves. It's more that this box has to be moved and it kind of shrinks as it gets closer to the intended... So yeah, that helps it be not entirely, you know, too much of just, you know, a help. And another thing that moves it towards that is the fact that you can, after all, only use it on one. You, know, you can only tag one person at a time. But yeah, it, it almost is kind of too easy. And you... I should go back into the the cover system. You, it it is fairly smooth. You you very immediately engage and disengage. And some people seem to give this a hard time for the cover system. It's not that bad. It's kind of, it's not good, but it's it's passable. It's it's average for, you know, as far as cover systems go. And you can't, you unfortunately can't brace weapons or rest them like you can in Red Orchestra, both Red Orchestra games. So, yeah, you, if you're aiming up above something, you might be aiming down into, the, you know, most of your scoped view might be obscured where in Red Orchestra 2, for example, you can actually, you know, if you want to aim further down, you're here, obstacles here, you will literally go up above if you point 
the, the scope further in that direction. So, yeah, it, it can't compete with that. But I do feel like people gave this too, too hard of a time for, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fine cover system. I mean, it's nowhere as bad as that of Max Payne 3, where you'll, like, get stuck in the cover and, you know, it'll, it'll be very slow to get out or in a cover. You might have a half a second, you know, break there before it actually, before it's clear whether or not it's actually going to engage or disengage the, the, the cover itself. You know, moving side to side can be a hassle. It might exit the cover without you really asking it to, you know, and then, you know, add to that the, the grenade problem where, you know, you can't choose whether you toss or roll grenades. The, the game will choose for you, and its instincts for that, the, the, the judgment for that is, is just horrible. You know, you, in, in this you actually get to choose when to pull the pin properly. You, you don't have to actually choose the grenade as in Max Payne 3, which, you know, obviously can, can really take too long you know, switching away from the gun, and, and really shouldn't at all be necessary. It isn't necessary in Red Orchestra 2, for example. You know, and yeah, some of you might be asking the, the reasonable question of would I really prefer that Max Payne 3 didn't have a cover system and grenades. Yes, frankly, I would, because not having content that's, you know, the, the content should be good and easy to use. You know, if, if there's bad content and then you're expected to use it, that's just frustrating. And then you get into how in that game, you know, the character handles like a mech. He'll stick to a direction you're going in. It's going to be slow to start moving in a certain direction at times. I, I know, I'd, I'm not actually trying to criticize these games that you know, can be compared to the actual game I'm reviewing the video. Okay, that's an outright lie. Anyway, in this you can actually choose which guns you bring in to you know, a mission or a multiplayer match. And you know, basically any that you've unlocked, that you've earned by the point that you're playing. And yeah, that, that helps a lot. Also, you know, replayability and giving you some some tactical opportunities. Some of the levels are really, really short. And yeah, the I suppose this is a good time to get into the co-op mode. The the first one, you know, supposedly has some small multiplayer and possibly also co-op. It doesn't work any anymore, you know. And and you can maybe say, you know, they they bet on the wrong horse. They should have, you know, they happen to choose a a system that is just no longer operational. That's fine. I'm not necessarily criticizing the developers, but it is worth noting for those who want to get the game today. Here it actually works. And you know, I I play via Steam. I swear I'm not actually trying to sell Steam, which is silly because it's free. I just like Steam a whole lot. They're not paying me, just... Steam is, to me, what, you know, really, you know what, what football or beer is to other people. It is my religion. I just, I cannot get enough of it. Yes, the, the co-op here actually works. You can play the whole campaign except for the prologue, in the co-op mode, you know, and it's, that there are times where you can really tell that they didn't, they didn't necessarily design the, the campaign specifically for co-op, and it's maybe also, they didn't necessarily really change 
stuff in the campaign to fit it into co-op. For, for example, Carl is... There, there's no explanation for how there are two players in, in the cutscenes. There, there is only the one Carl. I like to think that he has, you know, suffered PTSD to the point where it's given him MPD and the other Carl is actually his, yeah, his, the, the manifestation of, of his insanity. And there are also times where there's only one proper vantage point so basically the other player doesn't necessarily have a good vantage point at times not really anything to do in that situation it does help when the game sends enemies towards the position that you know that aren't in front of the vantage point like you're in a house shooting out of a window and they come in through the door and they're suddenly behind you for that the co-op player can obviously actually you know take care of the other side of that. So, so that's quite nice. And more interestingly in co-op are the additional co-op modes where the, the, there's, there's bombing run where basically you're seeking these, you know, extra, like, like repair parts for the, the vehicle that you have to escape by. And you really have to be careful about the, you know, the amount of, of enemies in the area. If too many of them are, you know, yeah, if too many, you might actually get killed if you aren't careful enough about it. And the and and that one has you know three levels that you can play. There's Overwatch, where basically one player is the is the sniper covering the other player, and the other player is an agent who only has access to some short range weaponry, you know, submachine gun and pistol, and the, the these are very stealthy and stealth stealth based and yeah there's they're a lot of fun and really require proper you know coordination communication and these are also some of the tougher like the campaign can be fairly easy but bombing run and overwatch they're fairly challenging and yeah now the Overwatch, I believe, has five levels. And, yeah, basically, for, for co-op, and, yeah, you, you can mark a basic area as well as enemies, you know, tag, which aids communication and coordination. And... I suppose that's about it for the binoculars. The and there, you might ask why the you know other than the tagging function, why would one use the binoculars rather than the, the sniping the sniper scope? And the the binoculars can zoom further than sniper scopes, and it's also it, it reveals more of the sort of, you know, when, when you look on the screen, it gives you more of, a, of an image where, you know, the, the scope might be this, the, the binoculars are this. Now, there are three difficulty settings and a custom one. And these are, you know, go into AI strength and the, the, the sniper ballistics. And this is you know, rather tense and challenging right from the first level. Now, you... Yeah, the, the AI in general, 
it's sometimes good, but it can be really bad. And the, the AI coupled with the fact that you have so much at your disposal, excuse me, can sometimes enable you to just, you know, go through it. Someone online, I think it was on Metacritic, someone compared it to you can play as Rambo and, you know, completely get away with it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Again, stuff like Bombing Run and Overwatch can, you know, alleviate that problem. Now, this has great graphics. The, you know, the first one just had, yeah, and the first one, they were okay for the time. This one will actually, you know, keep. I mean, the first one's from 2005. There are games older than 2005 that look better than it. This one, you know, 2012, and they still look good today and will keep looking quite good for, yeah. Now, the multiplayer has a reasonable variety of different modes. You know, there there is dog tag harvest where you get score by collecting the dog tags off the the people you've killed. You know, there is a distance king where the further the shot, the yeah, that will earn you points. And in general, the game will tell you how far the you know the shot you pulled off was and you know whether it was a headshot whether it was a moving target if you kill more than one person with a single bullet and the the various modes some of the modes rather have the option called no cross which literally confines the two teams to two different sides and there is no crossing so it's all long range shooting. Now there, there there are some problems with the multiplayer in that since everyone's a sniper, you know, there's it, it often gets into just camping with the best players, just you know, dominating the others. And the first one while I never got to play it, had this mode called Assassinate, where basically it was one team versus another. One team had to kill a VIP, the other had to protect it. And that sounds a lot like the, the a similar mode in the Assassin's Creed games. And yeah, that would have made things, you know, a lot more interesting. In this one mode that you know, I mean, other than the modes I've already mentioned, you just have, you know, deathmatch and, you know, this game some can, can sometimes really put the TDM in tedium. Yeah, it, it, it's not really that dynamic and, and compelling. The one mode that goes against that is capture the flag, where yeah, you know, you'll have players who have to run from, you know, one base to another, capturing the flag. And while, you know, there, there are many options for the multiplayer, so this isn't always true, but you can see the flag carriers, both of them, you know, highlighted on, you know, in a lot of these games, you, you know, when it's team mode in multiplayer, there are icons for you know the other player, or rather, when you look in a certain direction, you can see okay, there's you know one of my teammates is in that direction, and it'll have the name. This one it'll also show in in that same manner the two flag carriers. So yeah, you can it'll it'll really help you in intercepting the enemy flag carrier and protecting your own flag carrier, and given that everyone's a sniper, this gets really tense and, yeah, like I said, very dynamic. Now, I suppose this is a good time to get into the mini options for 
the multiplayer. There are things like headshots only, show player killer, you know, where immediately after you die, it'll cut to the, yeah, the, the player who killed you, you know, win strength, aim assist, bullet drop, glint scope, which basically it'll, it'll you know, the scope will reflect some light and show where the, you know, where that sniper is. And this is, you know, this is also true in single player and co-op. You know, zoom out to reload, single bullet reload, sudden death. Yeah, there are a lot of very nice, yeah, so, so in that respect, multiplayer can get very varied. And I feel I must praise every time a game does this, you actually get to choose your own server. I cannot stand when games just matchmake and try to, yeah. Now, the, I suppose that more or less covers in a number of the campaign levels, you have to test the waters to see if you should rush or wait, fight or hide. It is much too scripted making, you know, and that takes away from replayability, obviously. And sometimes you, enemies will spawn where you aren't, you know, you might move from one area to another. When you move from one area to another, enemies will spawn, and sometimes they'll spawn in an area you've already, you know, cleared, making exploration kind of pointless, and, you know, you, you can't necessarily, you know, there, there are sections where you can't move back once you've gotten a further, a certain distance in the level, so that can make flanking, you know, can, can greatly limit that. Limit that. You get to man some machine guns, and enemies will man them as well. And this, this is one of the times where the sniping, you can have some fun with the sniping. Once you know where a machine gun is, once you shoot the gunner, you can just keep an eye on other enemies in that general vicinity, and you know they will try to man the machine gun as well. And you can shoot them, yeah, as as they get there or once they've already gotten there. So that's that's quite nice. And you can also you can detonate grenades to, yeah. And and tanks are not the only vehicle that you can, you know. There there are trucks and such that you can also shoot the, the fuel cap of to make them blow up. And that will actually, yeah. That that'll kill anyone in the immediate vicinity, and there's a bonus for it if I recall, like you know, explosion kill, something like that. And there are, yeah, you know, you have the opportunity to just incapacitate someone, where they'll scream out for help, and the other end, it's it's the double tap basically, and. You know, if, if you don't shoot the guy as he gets to the body of his friend, he'll pick up his friend and, you know, walk away. And this will obviously leave him very susceptible to, you know, your sniper bullets. Now, the levels are very nicely designed and, as I've already said, very varied. None of them really feel too, too much like the others. Now, I suppose this more or less covers it. Something that makes multiplayer interesting is that you can do pretty much anything you can do in single player, only so can all the other players. So, yeah, that's where your skills really get tested. And the co-op modes also very nicely, you know, they're, they're varied enough in, you know, yeah, bombing run, you have to contain the situation, and 
the enemies are just going to appear. So you, you know, anytime you're getting into an area, you have to be careful that that area doesn't get out of your control. You know, not too many enemies. Yeah, and in you know Overwatch, it's more stealth based, and yeah. Now co-op levels or campaign levels have checkpoint saving just like the single player. I suppose that might be why they opted for checkpoint saving, although it still would be nice if, let's say if it offered us, you know, and any time you reached a potential checkpoint, it would offer you to save there and, you know, which I suppose brings up the, you know, if both players you know, do both players have to consent to that? And if they disagree, where's the tiebreaker? Yeah. If they did some kind of, you know... Yeah. I suppose that, you know, that is why that's a problem. I do still think that it's a problem, and it would be nice if they had solved it. Now, something that's very nice is if you com complete a campaign level in single player or co-op, it will also have been completed in the other. So, yeah, and the, the co-op player that has the most levels completed, you know, you can play all of that guy's levels. So, yeah, if you're... Yes, I believe that point covers that point. Now, I suppose that more or less covers it. The yes, I believe that covers it. Basically, it's it's an arcade sniper. It's not. It's not necessarily going to challenge you as much as you might like to from a sniping title. And certainly the just the, there are times when the game, again, Overwatch certainly is a challenge. But yeah, there's it's a game that isn't necessarily difficult unless you go for it being difficult, and it's not necessarily challenging from you sneaking around and lining up the perfect shot. It might just be, you know, okay, here's a bunch of people you have to kill, so make it snap. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.